So I'm going to use a very small hammer and gently tap it. Now, hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. And this is part number two of working on the Weber DCOE carburetor. And it doesn't really matter if it's a 35 or a 40 or even a 45, it is all the same. Uh, we are not going to talk about the jetting of this one. We're not going to talk about the operation of it because that was in part number one. Part number three will be all about the adjustments and the jetting of the carburetors. But in this part, we're going to focus on cleaning it, taking it apart, recondition it, and then put it back together. Now, before we start, uh, you're going to need a couple of tools and you're going to need a revision kit. I have a revision kit right here. A revision kit comes with many different parts like gaskets of all kinds. It comes with a valve for the float. You've got the spring for the acceleration pop, a lot of O-rings, the idle jet screws. We'll be using all this while we're going through the rebuild. So it's always good to buy a good quality kit. Uh, now, the kit doesn't come in this box, but I like to have my things a bit sorted out. So. You don't need a lot of tools to take the carburetors apart and to reassemble them. But you will need some wrenches, obviously, of different sizes to undo all the nuts. Uh, you will also need a punch, or a couple of punches, and I have a punch right here, of different sizes uh, to remove some uh, split pins or axles. Uh, I'm using actually also, for the very small ones, I'm actually using a uh, jewelry screwdriver set, which is very cheap, and I just grind it off the top. So now I have a nice flat tip and I can use it as a punch to punch out little axles. And of course you will have to use some circlip pliers. Uh, this is a circlip plier, but you can do it in another way. And it depends a bit on your carburetor, you might not need it. And in the extreme cases you might need a heat gun to heat up some parts. Uh, but that again depends a bit on the model. Um, and that's about it. And besides that, you might need a whole bunch of boxes and, and, and containers where you can put the stuff in, because that's what I like to do so I don't lose parts. Uh, if we're going to take apart the carburetor, some parts are spring-loaded, so be careful that it just jumps away and then you don't find it anymore. Now, most of the parts you can actually still get from those carburetors, so you can order those online. All right, so um, let's see now what we're going to do first. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do now is to pre-clean the carburetor. Now this carburetor here has already been pre-cleaned. This one has not and comes straight out of the car and you can actually see all the grease and the dirt that's still on it. Now you can pre-clean the way you want to pre-clean. Some people use gasoline and they use a brush to clean it all up. Uh, you can use carburetor cleaner, you can use brake cleaner. Use whatever you like to, do, to use. But I'm going to use an ultrasonic cleaner because I think that's a bit easier. So that is an ultrasonic cleaner. They come in different sizes and they are not really expensive, but they are very handy uh, for cleaning precision mechanical parts and other parts. So if you're gonna work a lot on carburetors, I really recommend that you get one. Anyway, um, all what it is, is a bath of uh, liquid with a basket inside it. And here is the basket and you just put the part in it, submerged in the water. The water has some detergents in it, and then you turn on the box and you can set the temperature. And ultrasonic works on the principle of waves. And inside the casing, there is what we call a transducer, and that device generates waves at a very high frequency, between 20 and 40 kilohertz. And these waves are modulated and they travel through the water. Um, and they cause what we call compression waves. And these compression waves then are creating millions and millions of microscopic small vacuum bubbles. And those vacuum bubbles, of course, cannot continue to exist. And they implode, which is the opposite of explosion, uh, violently. And that's how it cleans the surface of the materials that are inside. Uh, you can set it for about 15 minutes, and that typically is good enough. Uh, there's different detergents you can use for it, but okay, I mean, all that is not important right now. So what I'm going to do now is submerge my carburetor in full into the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to set the temperature to 80 degrees centigrade. The power is set to high, 
and I'm going to set the frequency to high because you can choose between frequencies. That should be good enough, and so let's start it. So let's have a look on how our carburetor is cleaned up after about 15 minutes. And here it is, and it looks like it's pretty clean. Of course, it's not 100%, but now it is clean enough to start to work with it. The first cleaning worked pretty well, as you can see, and it's still a bit hot, so um, I'm going to leave it in here. First, we'll remove the inspection cover. There we go. Next, we remove the fuel filter, and for that you need a spanner 19. And inside you will find the fuel filters. So I'm going to put all this in my box. And here is that little fuel filter. And now I will remove the fuel feed line. Oops, that was a bit tough. Comes out easily. Goes in the box. And now it's time to remove the top cover. For that you need to be a bit careful because inside you have the float and we do not want to damage the float. The bracket that you see on this side is only on one side of the carburetor and it's there for the gas throttle. So I think this should be about right. I'm going to remove all the bolts. Place them in my box. And now we can lift it out and you will see the float coming out. To replace this gasket, you will have to remove the float. And removing the float is done by knocking out this little axle there. And you will see that on the top, there is one top which has a split. Well, that's the side from which you need to hammer it out. So we need to hammer it out this way. You've got to be very careful because this float is very sensitive and it's one of the most critical elements of the carburetor. So let's see if we can get this little thing out. So I'm going to use a very small hammer and gently tap it. Now, this part is very sensitive, so if that can break, so if you do it in the wrong direction, you may be in trouble and it's not easy to get a new one. And remember my little jewel screwdriver? And here it is. And now I can remove the float. And we can also remove now the old gasket. And now we need to remove the fuel valve. And this is the valve that will shut down the fuel feed into the carburetor when the float is at the right level. And for that, you need a key number 10. And be careful with it. And underneath, there should be a washer as well. So. There we go, and you can actually see the washer right there, so you want to keep an eye on that. Now there's one point which is very important, is that this valve has a number on it, and this specific one says 150. So if you go in to order up your revision kit, make sure that you specify the size of the valve. Alright, so now we are down to the bare metal, there is nothing left on this, so now this can go in the ultrasonic cleaner. The float is a very important element in the actual carburetor and this one is made out of copper, very thin copper. So you got to make sure that there are no leaks or holes inside because otherwise the weight will no longer be correct. Now adjusting the float, and we'll do that later, will be by modifying the position of this lip here. So now what we're going to do is verify that the weight of the float is still correct. So let's check. So let's check the weight of the float on the scale, and it should be around nine grams. And it is. Um, your float may not be a copper one. It may be actually be a plastic one, and the plastic ones are in fact a little bit better than the copper ones because the copper ones, yeah, they are very very sensitive. The next step is to remove the idle jets, and there are two of them. And Actually, the jet itself 
is fitted all the way on the bottom and it has a number as you can see and the number on this one is a 50 f8 we'll talk about this later uh, in fact the jet is just pushed in so we can actually push it out but this is not for now right and then we're going to remove the main jets or the emulsion tube and here that is and again the emulsion tube the main jet and the air correction jet is on the top and that also takes apart like so uh, but we'll have a closer look once we get to this and while we are at it we might as well remove this little plate now we'll remove the choke system and it's just two screws it's one and number two I can see that this has been opened before because the screws are damaged all right now that should just come off like so and here you can actually see that mechanism and underneath you find the cold start jets and as you can see they are spring loaded so here you have to pay attention that it doesn't pop out so put your finger on it and then try to to get this ring out and then let it go slowly and you can see how that comes out otherwise it will jump away try to get this out there we go and now we can do the second side we do it exactly the same way watch out for the spring guys there we go gently and We shouldn't be scratching things. Always be very gentle with it. And that is it for the choke system. So now we'll remove the acceleration pump a bit in the same way. Be careful priming this out. And this is the acceleration pump. So now we can get the choke jets out. And now it's time to remove these little valves and these are like little weights and a little ball underneath and be careful not to lose those. And for that you need to undo those screws and they work in combination with the acceleration pump and I keep all my parts together in the box where they belong yeah you got to be careful these are brass screws so uh, not to damage them and I think my screwdriver is a bit on the big side so let's see if I can get these weights out and for that I probably have to flip it over and here they are little weights and balls often people lose those now let's remove the bottom panel And there's nothing more to be removed on this side. Now let's remove the return valve for the acceleration pump. And this is the return valve. Now we can remove the little mixture adjustment screws. We can also remove the progression hole cover
And now we can remove the acceleration jet. There it is. And as you can see, this is the acceleration jet. Now we're going to start to remove the butterflies and the axle bed they sit on. But before we can do that, we need first to remove the spring here. So there's a spring here that goes down all the way down to that axle. So removing the spring will require us to disconnect it from this plate, but also to remove it from the part inside. So let's remove this shield first. Now that shield caused me a lot of trouble because those screws were already damaged by somebody else removing them before, so they were very hard to get out. So I already have them kind of pre-removed so to make sure that it went a bit smooth in this video. You gotta be careful with those screws because they are really copper, so they are really easily damaged. Let's take the panel off. And inside, you have this spring. You see that spring moving back and forth here? And it's hooked on the bottom part, so you need to unhook it and also on the top. And then you need to knock out this little pen in the middle before you can actually remove this uh, butterfly axle. So we're going to try to remove, first of all, that spring. And here is that spring. And I will remove the plate gently, like so. There we go. And we hold it. The next step is to remove this lifting mechanism. And for that, I need to knock out this pin there in the middle. And for that, I'm using my jewelry screwdriver, which I grinded off the top because I don't have the right driver for that. So let's see if we can get it out. Again, slight ticks with a hammer. And you probably will see it coming out. See that on the bottom there? There it is, it's coming out slowly. And it's out. The next step is to remove the butterflies and these screws can be really tough. So you need to remove those two screws before you can take this copper butterfly out. And they can be really tough because they lock them at the inside by damaging the thread. So I already loosened them up before, not to waste any time, but it's tough. And you can see even now, it is a bit tough to get them out because that's what they do with it. I can feel it. Now, you should never put the same screws back in. You should always get new screws for this. They may turn a bit easy in the beginning, but you will feel when they come out further how bad the tread is. But these coming out pretty much all right. So now let me take the butterfly out. And that should just slide out, see? Now I'm going to put the same butterfly back where it was before, so I want to make sure that the right one is going to the right place. So I'm going to mark this one as being the right hand one. So I'm going to make a little mark on them. Right. Okay. These two screws that are holding the butterfly in place are often very hard to get out because they actually um, open them up in the back, they knock them in a bit so they can't come loose. I'll show you that as soon as one is out. So you may have to do some careful grinding in the back. And if you're lucky, you can get it out. Let's see. See, now it becomes tough to turn. But this one is not too bad. This is the screw that just came out, the butterfly, and you can see the punch they've done at the front of the screw to make sure they don't get loose. And that's what makes it hard to get them out sometimes. And now we can take that butterfly out. There 
we go. And I will place it back where it was before. I marked the other one. I don't need to mark this one. And now it's time to get this axle out. And that is a bit more difficult, I would say. So the first thing is to remove the lever mechanism on the side here by removing this nut. That seems to be an 11. And for that, you need a spanner 11 and hold it. All right. Stuff to get off. There we go. Locking plate needs to come off. And now the whole side should come off. And now comes the tricky part. On this carburetor, we have a plate which is pressed in. It may not be the case on all of them, but that little plate here with the two holes has to come out first. And that is a bit tough to get it out. Uh, the best way to do this is to heat up the carburetor, the body, with a heat gun, and then use some pliers in the holes and then try to twist it out. So let's give it a try. Underneath you have a bearing and in some cases these bearings go bad so then you might have to replace the bearings. So you really want to heat up the housing of the carburetor. And I'm using what we call a paint strip for that. So let's see if we get it out. And not yet. This is tough, guys. I can't get it out yet. I'm going to spray some rust flash on it. Only in the middle. No, that's not going. This is the toughest part of this carburetor to get out. So let's see with a bit of fiddling if we cannot move it. I can see it's moving a bit. So I might be able to get it out. And be careful, because there's a spring underneath. There we go. Finally, I got it out. And this is it, guys. This is the most difficult part to get off. And a spring. Hopefully we can get the spring out. There we go. And inside, we've got kind of a washer or seal. There's not much left of it. This used to be a seal, not a lot left. And you can actually see the bearing, which is sitting all the way inside. Try to rotate the shaft and then you will feel if the bearings are good or not. These bearings, they don't rotate, they just go in jerks. You probably might see it. See how that jumps? In fact, all the seals were gone. Now we need to get the butterfly shaft out and the only way to do that is by knocking it out. And I'm going to place it on a socket so that the socket sits on this edge here. And I'm going to gently knock it out. And you might have to spray it a bit. If you have a press, you might want to do it with a press, but you've got to be very, very careful. I have a piece of wood here where the axle fits in. So now I'm going to press that out very carefully. I want to make sure I don't break anything.
I don't want to press too hard. Give it its time to settle. And it's really stuck. You can see that. But you've got to be careful because this is a heavy press so it can really break it. And there we go, it just jumped, which is good. And now I will release it and do the rest. Getting the shaft and the bearings out is not easy and it takes a bit of effort. And I'm using a oak piece of wood with a big hole in the middle so the shaft can go in while I'm knocking it. So I'm going to place it on there and I'm going to use a plastic hammer to move it back and forth a bit. See it moves a bit, it helps with a bit of spray on it and then we turn it over and I'm going to keep doing this until I got it really out. All right. Okay, so now it's time to get it knocked out completely. And you can see the bearing is going to start to come out. Okay, so let's place it on the edge. All right, so that's coming slowly. See, it's coming out. Do it gently, guys. There's no need to push that real hard. Bearing is coming out. And now we have it almost out. So. There we go. That's uh, a bit of pulling, but we got it out. And I noticed that the shaft on one side is a bit crooked. Oh, it's actually this side where it's crooked. You probably can't see it. All right, so it's going to be something to get this bearing off. And now we can get the spring mechanism out of it. And here it is. Uh, so, piece of cake, right? There is a lot of videos on YouTube where they take carburetors apart and everything goes so smoothly. But the reality is, that's not how it is. This spindle that I took out here was a pain in the butt to get it out. And one of the issues that I had with it was that the spindle is actually crooked. So look at the end side here, how crooked that is if I turn it. You see that? So somebody bended it so badly and damaged the thread at the end that you cannot even put a nut on there anymore. So that all makes it so difficult sometimes to remove things. You also have seen some screws that were damaged. So that does make it easy sometimes. But if you have a lot of patience, you can get it out. And I did in this case. So I will have to order up some replacement parts for this and hopefully I can get it. If I can't get it, then I will put it on the lathe and I'm going to make it straight again and then put some new tread on it and see how that goes. But I hope I don't have to do that. I can probably buy this part. As the spindle is crooked, I have no way to knock out the other bearing, which is still in there. So um, I'll have to do it with a little punch that I have here. And then I'm going to try gently through this hole here to knock it out. I need to get new bearings anyhow. Oh, it's coming out. There we go. See that bearing? It just flipped apart. That's how bad this bearing really was. It, it did have no more strength at all. And I could actually feel it. Uh, so, yeah, we need to get new bearings. There we go. 
And now there's the last thing to do is to take the Venturis out. And they normally flip out quite easily. If they don't, then you have to do it from the other side with a piece of wood and gently knock on it. So these are the secondary Venturis. That's number one. I'm going to try the other one. And normally you can get them out. But here there's a bit of grease in it, so there we go. They are locked in place with this little spring here, and that's the old model. And then inside you got the yolks, so they should come out quite easily. There we go. While I was double checking the uh, secondary Venturis, I noticed that this is a 3.5 and the other one is a 4.5. So we have different secondary Venturis on this vehicle, yet the emulsion tube is the same and the primary jet is the same. Everything is the same except the Venturis or secondary Venturis are different. That is not good. So now I have the carburetor down to its very basic form. It's just an aluminum cast. I have some other parts laying around, also part of the carburetor, and now it's time to clean it. But before I start cleaning it, I just want to make one more point. Uh, a lot of videos will show you on how to take the carburetor apart, and it just flies. You know, things are so easy. Reality is, if you're going to do it, it's not going to be that easy. You're going to have challenges with bad screws or copper brass screws that are no longer turning properly. They may even break off, so you have to drill them out. Like in my case, I had this spindle here, which is crooked, so I had a big issue with that to get it out. That wasn't going all that easy. So all these small things need to be sorted out um, when you take it apart. So take your time, look at it, you know, and try, and you will get it uh, separated at the end. If you're lucky, you have a good carburetor that has not been messed around with before. So in my case, that was not the case. Anyhow, um, now it's time to clean it. And I'm going to clean it a bit different than what most people would do, I guess. Um, I like a very nice outside and a correct inside, of course. Um, and that's why I'm going to blast it with soda. So I'm going to blast the body with soda and also the cover. I'm not going to blast, of course, the yolks and all the other stuff and the jets. That's not necessary. That's all for the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, and then once it's blasted with soda, I, I will stick it back in the ultrasonic cleaner. You don't need to blast with soda, but I like it because it gives me a nice surface. It's not going to be perfect because it's an old one and I can see already a lot of areas where soda probably won't help me much. Uh, I could do it with glass beads, but that's again a bit more too aggressive, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but at least I want to get it clean. Now, it's up to you how you want to clean yours. You can use anything you want. You can even paint the surface if you want. Uh, but you can clean it with gasoline. You can clean it with um, brake cleaner or even carburetor cleaner. All these products are on the market. It's up to you. Um, I'm just doing it the way I always do it. So let me get the blaster ready and then uh, we we'll start blasting the carburetor and then we'll stick it back into the ultrasonic before we start reassembling it. The carbs are now soda blasted at the inside and the outside, and then I did the light blasting with some Garnet 360 on the outside, 
because there were quite some dirty spots still on these carbs, especially on the sides, as you have seen. But now they're really clean and um, they are ready to be assembled. Unfortunately, I will not be able to assemble them because I'm still missing some parts. But let me first of all give you a bit of a closer look up on these carps, how they now look like. So there will be a part 2B now, where we are going to assemble the parts and measure things out because we had quite some issues with these. You, you never know what you get when you get a car from someone. These are things you wouldn't expect. First of all, uh, I had a major issue with the spindle where the butterflies were on. I couldn't get it out because that spindle was bent on both carburetors, so I need to get a brand new spindle. The bearings were totally gone, so I have to get new bearings. And then I had some other issues. There was a difference in one carp between two of the secondary Venturis. One was a 3.5, the other one was a 4.5. God knows why people put that together like that. And then I found out that in between two carburetors, the main jet is also different. This one is a 150, this one is a 165. It really doesn't make sense. So you could see that people have thrown this together without knowing what they were doing. Uh, so hopefully I can correct all that. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'll see you in my next video when we're putting everything back together, we start measuring things, and we align everything up as it should be.